Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for those of you who are joining us right now. Um, we are very excited to have you all on to celebrate our homecoming and family weekend at home. Um, I know some people might be cooking alongside with uh, Brendan here. If that's the case, um, you're more than welcome to keep your video on, keep it off, um, whatever makes the most sense for you. Um, if you guys have any questions throughout the event itself, um, we are more than happy to answer them. Um, I will help facilitate those questions to Brendan and make sure that he gets a chance to answer them for you, especially if you are cooking alongside us. Um, we are recording the session. Um, it should have hopefully prompted you um, to let you know as you entered the room, but just a formal warning here. Um, we're really just recording Brendan. Um, that will be the speaker view most of the time. Um, chat feature is down usually at the bottom of your screen in case anyone wants to ask those questions. Um, you'll see right now that I'm sending a quick chat so that you can see where that looks like. And that's what I'll relay to Brendan. Um, one of the other couple of quick things that we can do too is if you want to also see Brendan as a little bit bigger on your screen, you can go to speaker view. Um, that is something that's up in the top right corner of your screen, depending on what device you're on. Speaker or gallery view. Gallery view will show you everyone's little boxes um, for who's on the event tonight. Speaker view will just give you the person speaking. Um, you can also pin Brendan. Um, his thing is right in the hopefully the top left corner of your screens um, under Chef Brendan Cronin. There's three little dots in the right corner of his video and you can pin him to your screen so that he is what you see the most. Um, I'm just gonna wait one more second and see if anyone else signs in. Most likely we'll have a few more people jump on um, as we get started a little bit. We've had um, for the rest of the weekend's activities, um, a couple of people joining us late but the recording is so that we can put it up on the website and everyone can see what we're doing. Um, if anyone has questions, like I said, just let us know. Um, I'm gonna do a formal introduction now and then we'll hand it over to Brendan to start just to keep us all in time. So hello everyone, I'm Tori Pilbin. I'm the Director of Alumni Relations here at Endicott College. I'm also a graduate uh, 2014 and my master's in 2015. I've been working in the alumni office for just over five years and I'm really excited to be one of the co-chairs of our homecoming committee. Um, I work alongside Molly Buckley, who's the assistant director of student activities. And we have worked really hard um, with a number of people across campus to put these activities on. I wish that we could be on campus all together um, for this weekend. It's always a favorite fall weekend for us, but unfortunately we can't, not this time. So we are excited to have been able to put on a homecoming and family weekend at home. So with that, I thank all of you for joining us. I thank Brendan for being a part of this weekend and he has a really, really great um, menu selected for us and he's gonna show you exactly what to do and how to prepare it like a chef. So with that, I'm gonna let Brendan introduce himself and start our class. Thank you very much, Tori. And I'd like to thank uh, the entire staff and alumni relations and also Molly Buckley uh, for setting all of this up and uh, organizing it with Zoom links and so on. So welcome everybody and thank you so much for signing up for this uh, 45 minute to one hour um, virtual cooking show um, coming to you from La Chanterelle uh, restaurant, our non-traditional classroom in the School of Hospitality Management. And I'm here in the kitchen of La Chanterelle and behind me, about 50 yards behind me, we've got the Atlantic Ocean. So we're right on the oceanfront venue of Nisselwood, uh, which houses Nisselwood events, um, which hosts multiple weddings and various types of celebrations on our venue here at Missilewood. And of course, Missilewood is home to La Chanterelle, as I just mentioned. My name is Brendan Cronin. I'm operations manager and associate professor in the School of Hospitality Management. Culinary Arts is one of the many classes I teach at Endicott uh, during the spring and the fall semester. Students in this class are predominantly freshmen and it affords them an introduction into the basics of cuisine. Our students are destined to be hospitality managers and are not uh, here to be uh, chefs, culinarians, um, but a lot of our students go on to be entrepreneurs and lead very successful lives 
at the management level. Hence why we have only one pre credit culinary arts class. We also have a service management class, which is in front of the house. And off to my left here, we have a beautiful 60 seat restaurant, um, which is in, in normal times open to the public, but this semester, uh, due to COVID restrictions, it is not open to the public, but open to uh, uh, some parents and then faculty and staff on campus, but just to protect everybody. So um, we'd like to start. Uh, I've got some dishes prepared. You have seen the menu. Some of you might be cooking with me. Some of you may not, and that's fine. I just wanted to go over and explain some ingredients and, and chat. So if you have any questions, if you type it into the chat, Tori will read it, and I will uh, hear and I'll be able to answer as we go. So uh, I'm fine with that. So uh, if you have a question, just pop it in there. So I'm going to switch on our, our gas here. I'm going to start. We've got three dishes. We're doing salmon. We're doing with couscous and lemon. Um, we're doing a shrimp with avocado. And then we're doing a apple and cranberry medley for dessert. And uh, we should have that all wrapped up in about uh, 35 to 40 minutes. Um, and then uh, you should be able to enjoy it. So make sure you've got a glass of Chardonnay ready so you can sit back if you're not cooking. And if you are cooking, uh, I don't know about having sitting Chardonnay when you're near the stove, but anyway. I won't be sitting in the Chardonnay while I'm working. So um, I'm using this burner here, and you can see um, quite a powerful burner. Uh, we measure gas energy in BTUs, uh, the acronym BTU, British Thermal Units. And it is used to measure the energy in gas. One British thermal unit is the amount of energy needed to bring one pound of water one degree, just to give you an idea. The reason I mentioned that is while we're waiting for this pan to heat up is that this burner has 30,000 BTUs, just this one burner. I've got six big burners here, they're all the same. There's 180,000 BTUs if these are all on at full power. Your stove at home, for the most part, with four or five burners, each burner has about 7,000, the entire stove, excuse me, has about 7,000 BTUs. So this one burner here is four times more powerful than the entire stove you have top of the stove at home. Um, and that, that's for a good reason. If you have these powerful burners in your house or a stove of this side, the uh, fire department would require you to put special insulation at the back because of the amount of heat. So I'm using a skillet, cast iron. Uh, I like working with cast iron. Uh, it holds the heat very well and it helps with browning. And uh, I mentioned avocado oil. I'm using a little avocado oil here. Avocado oil is a, has a very high smoke point. You can see here, it's already smoking, 400 degrees, much higher than olive oil. Uh, olive oil, when we heat it to high temperatures, we break down the monosaturated fatty acids in the, in the oil and we damage it, so it's not very healthy. So I've got my salmon here. I'm going to put a little bit of salt and pepper. And I'm using a little bit of uh, kosher salt here. Go. Right. Now we want to get a good color on this salmon. So we're going to put it flesh side down. I think we said skin side up, so flesh side down. And we're going to get a nice ear on that. Uh, this is, I have actually bought a coho salmon, which is from the Pacific. And this is wild caught. Right. And you'll get those all the way from uh, Hokkaido in Japan, all the way down across Russia, and all down the uh, western seaboard of the United States, down as far as Monterey. And then the waters get warmer from there on, and, and the fish doesn't travel anymore. And you have the Atlantic salmon that's there with a different, very different uh, type of fish. So you notice here I'm not moving the salmon around a lot. I'm having it just, there's no need to move food around. The food needs to get brown, so we want to have a color on the bottom. We want to get a nice color, and when you put food in a hot medium, if there is no fat in between the heat of the metal, same as a grilling in the backyard with metal bars on a grill, a frying pan, if there's no fat between the food and the pan, it won't brown. It'll go directly to black. Uh, I, 
I can sometimes on the, uh, the bars of a grill, put the food on the grill without fat medium. So always spray it or put an, an olive, not an olive oil, but an avocado oil on it. And that helps a lot with, so we're sealing it before then. Now I'm gonna just turn it over. You can see we've got a little, a little color here. You can see that. Right. And I'm gonna switch down the, Right. So we're doing the salmon first because that takes a bit longer to cook. And we're going to put that in the oven. And then while we're doing the salmon, while it's cooking, we can get on to get our couscous going and get, get some water boiling for our couscous. All right. So, very good. Now we can take our salmon and we're going to switch this off. And I can take the salmon out using a pound for the moment. It won't break. So I gotta be very careful. If I lift it to one side, it's gonna break. And then it doesn't look so nice on the plate anymore. Right. So we can put it away in the back. I don't need it anymore. And then we've got our we've got mustard here. Now if you don't, we're gonna brush it with mustard. If you don't have a mustard uh, nice brush like this, fancy brush, you can use a spoon. We've got a spoon here. Right. And we're gonna Put on a little bit of mustard, and while I'm waiting for that, I'm going to heat up uh, the breadcrumbs. Uh, and I think you saw that. Get some butter going. Got our breadcrumbs here, and we're going to put in a little bit of thyme and basil. That's what's on the. I'm using dried thyme and dried basil. Um, I believe that the dried herbs have a much stronger flavor than the fresh ones. Fresh ones are nice for decoration. You'll see I'll put some of those up afterwards, right? So I'm putting those in. I want those in the butter, so because they're dry, they're going to absorb some of the butter very quickly. Right? Then I'm going to put in a little bit of garlic. I use garlic press, so all I have to do is really put the clove inside and put it, and then I can just put it inside, squeeze it. Now, there we go. That, allows me to have the oil of the garlic go right inside, right into the dish. You can smell it. Just like infuses up that garlic. You're gonna to toss it off a little bit, and then we want to cook the garlic. Raw garlic is not very appetizing to give to a guest, so uh, we want to make sure that it's cooked a little bit. I have, now I'm using a much lower flame than I did for the salmon, because I don't want to burn the butter. So we we'll toss that around nicely. And now we're going to add some uh, breadcrumbs, which I've got here. Stir it all with a spoon. There we go. We don't need, that's already all cooked. The breadcrumbs are cooked, and the garlic's already cooked, and I've got a beautiful dry, dryish um, breadcrumbs with a lot of flavor. I've got the garlic, the butter, it is a richness. I'm going to put in a tiny bit of pepper, a little bit of salt. I also already put salt on the, I uh, already put salt on the fish, so I don't want to overdo it. And now we can assemble it. So we're going to put, I'll use a spoon, but you could use a brush and I explained it earlier on. We're going to put a little bit. This is a Dijon mustard, right? Dijon from the town of Dijon in France. World renowned for its mustard. And put a little bit here. Now, we're careful not to put too much mustard on it because the salmon has a delicate flavor. So we want to put a little bit of mustard so the breadcrumbs will stick to it. Brandon? Brendan, yeah. one question that came in is what temperature is the oven at for the salmon once you're going to put it in there? Whoever asked that question gets an A from me because I realized when I wrote all the recipes and I read them, I said, I never told anybody what <laughs> the oven at. So kudos, whoever you are. Uh, 350 degrees. Great. Thank you. Allie, I hope that answered your question. <laughs> all right. Yeah. I typically use Practically everything other than some uh, pastries and desserts. Typically 350 degrees for everything because you must keep in mind, I'm in here 
and with our pastry instructor, Rebecca Doyen, and everyone else is a non-professional. These students are in here for the first time. So 350 degrees is a, uh, a moderate oven. It's very simple, seldom I will go above that. It uh, helps me avoid any accidents. So you see I'm putting the breadcrumbs on here and tapping them in a little bit. The mustard allows them to stick. And this is really a, a twist on a New England baked fish that I have eaten many times here. I came over to, to uh, Landica and I found that sometimes I get a baked fish and it's just uh, Ritz crackers on top. Right? There's no flavor, not a lot of flavor. So this one actually packs a powerful punch of flavor. Um, so there we go. So that's our salmon ready to go in the oven. And I will put it in the oven here. And that will be continued cooking while we are preparing the rest of our meal. Now I've got here a, I've just got around the couscous while we're talking. And I've heated up a little bit of broth and I've put in, it's not in the recipe, but I put in for a little splash of color, some turmeric. Turmeric is a, is a herb, spice, which is very popular in India and it is the spice that gives a yellow color to curry. Turmeric is also, research has shown, responsible for very low instances of Alzheimer in the Indian population, in, in the country of India, because they consume so much curry, they're consuming turmeric on a daily basis. So uh, that was a little bit of extra information. It wasn't included in the price. <laughs> Brendan, one more question yes. on how long the salmon is going to actually cook in the oven. It's going to be in there for about a 15 minutes. 15, great. Yeah. Um, it depends on how long you cook it in the skillet before you put it in the oven. If you cook it, you could cook it completely here and then just put the breadcrumbs on it and serve it without baking it. If that's a possibility as well. So we've got our, our uh, couscous. Couscous, originally from Morocco, uh, it's considered, it's not a grain, it's, it's man made. It's durum semolina, which is the hardest semolina we can get. It's usually made, used for making pasta. But this is machine rolled into tiny little balls. And it's popular in practically all North African uh, dishes, uh, namely the dish couscous, which is much more complex than just the, the pasta. So we put that in here. And this is such a simple thing to do. We can give it one twirl here. And we're going to switch off. And there's enough heat, residual heat there, for it to continue cooking. And that couscous is pretty much will be ready to go. So I'm going to put this away for a moment, and then we're going to take our apples, which also take a little bit of time to cook. And I've got them over here. I need a little bit of preparation in advance. So we'll have, I'm using a different, I'm using a stainless steel, but all of our cooking equipment in the kitchen is stainless steel or uh, cast iron skillets. Um, uh, I don't like to cook with aluminum because uh, in aluminum, minute particles of aluminum scrape off when you're stirring or whisking in a container and uh, it's a heavy metal. So heavy metals, we shouldn't be consuming heavy metals. Whereas stainless steel is world renowned as being a metal that does absolutely no interaction with any type of food. You can cook tomato sauce in it, you can boil lemon juice. It doesn't discolor the metal. And there's no particles of metal that will come into the food. So we're going to look at our uh, apples. Now, I peel the apple ahead of time just so that we could, and I will cut them up for you, you can see here. And while we're waiting, I'm going to melt some of the butter. That's our butter. There we go. And I can then begin to add the apples. So I peel them and I core them, and I'm just going to cut them into chunks. 
I have them in water because apples tend to go turn black. And personally for me, if I was making this for myself and not on a public zoom, uh, I wouldn't peel the apples because there's a lot of nutrition in the skin. Uh, but uh, many customers they don't like to see the skin, uh, which is kind of unusual because when we eat an apple, if you're bringing it for your lunch, we eat it, you don't peel it before you eat it, so we peel it, we eat it the skin. But when we cook them, we don't want it, like an apple pie with the skin on, not me put my frown on that. So, we've got that. And it is going to burn on for good measure, and I'm going to pop that around. So, a little bit more. This is a, a great fall dish, it's very timely. Um, this time of year when children go apple picking, and then you can, in the home, and it's something a little bit different to an apple pie. And of course, with the cranberries, uh, fresh cranberries coming on. So I've got it here. Stirring the apples around and giving them a little saute in, in butter to give flavor. We've got the cranberries, we're going to add those. That's going to be uh, delicious when it's all done. Right? And now on the, on the recipe, there was uh, some brown sugar, which I have here. We're going to put a little bit of brown sugar inside. As we do that beforehand. Okay. Right. Stir that in. And we're going to now what's happening here is the the uh, the apples you can see camera the apples are going to take a little bit of color from the cranberries and that's fine because it gives it that beautiful uh, color that we associate with the autumn and now we're going to put in a little bit of cinnamon right so I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of cinnamon if you go too heavy on the cinnamon. Uh, can be overpowering. And then what I'm going to do here is uh, I put down on the recipe a nice point of um, cloves. And a nice point is exactly what it says. It's really from the French translation, point couteau. You just take just enough like that and then you measure because if you put the clove is so strong, it will dominate and and if you put too much clove, it will become bitter. So I just put that in there for a little a more powerful kick. Uh, liken it to salt and pepper. If you put too much pepper in, it'll be very difficult to eat. And that's the same here. Uh, then we have also the juice of half a lemon. And we have this ready to go here. And this will give it a little bit of acidity. So we will have the acidity of the cranberries and the acidity of the lemon. And it also provides enough of the liquid so that now when I put this off to one side and have it cook, it'll stew in its own juices. I don't need to add any more, um, any more liquid. And in addition, the brown sugar will draw out some liquid from from the apples. So we're going to put those. Uh, there's a reason they call this on the back burner. I'm going to visit it later. All right? So we're going to let that simmer nicely there and, then, and I will cover it so that it will be nicely stewed. We're going to have a look at our couscous coming out beautifully. I just want to show it to you. You can see it here. Beautiful yellow color. I'm going to work with that in a few minutes. I'm going to cover it so it stays warm. Well. Right, so we have our salmon in the oven. We have our uh, apple medley coming on beautifully on the back burner. And I'm keeping an eye on the flame so I don't want it to get too hot. If it gets too hot, it will burn off the juices inside and then the apples will burn. And no one wants that. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take the um, 
Chop the board, turn it over, and we're going to work with our shrimp and avocado. And I'll bring over a different set of ingredients. So here we have our ingredients for that fish. And we're going to look at that from a perspective of eye appeal. I'm using half avocados, and I have some that are ripe, but not overly ripe. You want to choose the avocados. So when you're purchasing avocados, you want to just squeeze it gently with your thumb. And if there's a little give, it's ripe to eat. If you're buying them for later, buy them green. They will be rock hard. Take them home and put them with the rest of your fruit on the kitchen table. Bananas, oranges, whichever fruit you have. And these fruit give off what we call a um, <clears throat> methylene gas, which activates the ripening process in all the fruit, which then attra attracts fruit flies, which we're all familiar with, right? And the avocado will ripen slowly, it will turn from green to black, and it will become dimpled, which is a good indication. So in, in the supermarket, a good indication is a black, Dark avocados, the skin is a ripe one, and the green ones are still unripe. So we want to uh, see how we can do this. We'll take one, see when we cut it in half. I'm cutting it straight down, and then I'm just going to turn it around all the way until I get to the other side. Then I can just open it like that. Now, if you're only using one, I'm just going to plate one for today. There's two in yours, but I'll plate one. If you want to take the stone out, uh, I'll show you how to do that. If you want to put this back in the fridge for tomorrow, sprinkle a little, uh, squeeze a tiny bit of lemon juice and rub it inside, and leave the stone in and put it in the door of your fridge, and it will prevent it from going black. If you want to take the stone out, just hit your knife and then turn it a little to the left, and then pick it up like that. So you take the stone out without damaging, because you, know, you want to keep this nice part. Right, now we want to take it out of the, out of the stem, and we want to look our apples are doing, are doing just beautiful. Uh, we're using a spoon that is practically the same shape as the avocado. And I'm going to use that to go down around the avocado's right. This is actually very easy to do. And I take it all the way around and I take the avocado. There's no flesh left inside. And then I turn it upside down. And I'm going to use it to make a fan. That was what we said on the, um, on the recipe. I'm just going to cut it in nice shape like that. And then with my knife underneath, just press it gently. And it will become a nice fan shape. Now I'm going to put this on a, on a plate. And I have here, I'm going to use a nice plate. Plates are important because they, they set off the meat. It's like the frame. I look at this as, this is the frame, this is a blank canvas. What the customer sees will be the creative part that the chef put on it. That's why the majority of plates in the center are white. Much like when an artist starts painting a picture, start from a white, a white background. So we're gonna lift this off gently and put it right in the middle. So we'll press it down so it looks like a fan, looks attractive. We're going to take our shrimp. It's funny how I say our shrimp because I'm on my own in here, so I don't know who else is around. We should say, let's take the shrimp. And we're going to put the shrimp around in a nice appetizing way. Right? Now, if I was selling this to the public, I would be wearing gloves. But this is not for sale. So there I have four shrimp. If you want more, you could put more shrimp on it. Uh, and as I talk about gloves, I should also let you know that I'm not wearing a mask today. There is no one else in the entire kitchen. And the camera person is very far away. They just by we were not up close with Zoom. So we're following all campus protocols for that. Uh, I just thought it would be uh, difficult if I'm wearing a mask for just for tasting and for also for expression. 
So we've got our avocado and we've got our shrimp. The sauce, I, I gave you a recipe with all the ingredients, with the mayonnaise, the chipotle, and the spices, and cilantro, put in the blender and whirl it. Uh, I didn't want to do that, and now you're listening to a, 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 a blender or whirling for uh, a long time. I thought, I'm going to make the sauce ahead of time, so this is what it will look like. So it's not good. It's got a kick to it, because the chipotle pepper will give it a kick, and that's what's nice about it. I'm going to put a little bit in here, in a small dish, so that the customer, the guest, or the family member, can actually dip. Right? They can dip inside, and we're going to put it here, huh? and then we're going to put a little bit of sauce just here in between. We want to have a visual for the customer. What will the customer think when the food is put down in front of them? We're going to take a tiny pinch of crusher salt and put it on the avocado. This will give the avocado its own flavor. Not necessarily having to dip the avocado in, in the sauce. So now we can put some decoration here for a little splash of color. I just put some cherry tomatoes here. Put another one right here. And another one right here. And then a little bit of cilantro because cilantro is in the, um, in the recipe. I'm going to put a little bit off to one side. I used a Haas avocado. Um, Haas avocado were planted by Rudolf Haas way back in the early 1900s in California. And today they are one of the most prolific uh, varieties of avocado uh, in the world. And, and quite popular here in the United States. So that is our dish for the shrimp. Um, and I will perhaps we can have a look there in the zoom. Now uh, this is a simple dish. Um, I could have tossed the avocado and the shrimp up in a bowl. I could have put the dressing with it. We could have put a bed of uh, arugula, we could put it in the center. There are many ways to present, but the shrimp is, is a, a high-profile dish. When the shrimp is on the menu, customers go for shrimp. Avocado is a high-in-demand appetizer. So we want to give them the presentation that their work deserves. So the shrimp are not hidden. Right? These are oh, wild-caught shrimp, and they are steamed. I didn't boil them, I steam them, because you boil them, you put them in hot water, it draws out the, um, a lot of the goodness, where if they're steamed, it's much easier. All right, so that's one of our dishes complete. So we're moving right along on time. Uh, I did have something here that we can also add to it, just as a, Customer looks at that, and you know, in German they say the eyes eat too, which means that the eyes are the first thing that are going to appreciate the, the presentation. Afterwards comes the sense of smell, and only third comes the sense of taste. And if it's in the case of the avocado, the sense of touch is in there as well. So there is multiple segments to how the flavors are experienced by the customer. Right, so we are coming along nicely. We've got our salmon in the oven, coming along good, and we've got our couscous. So we are almost ready to plate that, and we're looking at our uh, something about the apples now when I smelled it. I smell 
salmon, um, a little pinch of clove, cranberries have dissolved, the apples are soft, but they're not mushy. Right? I'm going to show you that in a few minutes and we'll see it on the camera. Uh, something I wanted to mention about the flavors of cinnamon, I'd just like you to think about cinnamon for a minute. And just in your mind, just think cinnamon. Imagine you are smelling a bowl of cinnamon. What memories will that evoke? If you think for a minute, it will evoke memories of what that smell, or aroma, I should say, what memories does the aroma evoke? And this is a very important part of what we call taste memories. And as chefs, we want to meet the customer right where they're at with their taste memory. And but the sense of smell is a very powerful one. Hence why perfumes are so popular, because we remember when we smell a perfume, we remember it evokes uh, memories of going way back in time. And I, I do this exercise in uh, class with the students to reinforce uh, flavor profiles uh, and ch taste memories for the guests. And uh, I'll ask the students, I asked one uh, actually last fall, I asked her, I pass around the cinnamon, because I've got a big jar of cinnamon, and I pass it around, and I get every student just to, to smell the cinnamon, and don't make any judgment, just smell it, pass it to the next student, and so on. And uh, then when they've all smelled it, and I give them a few seconds, I ask them what memories it brings back. And uh, one student, and many will bring up memories, that this, one student last year, um, she, she replied, uh, that reminds me of making apple pies with my grandmother when I was younger. And I said it many years ago. She said it was many years ago. I said, was your grandmother wearing an apron? She said, yes, she was. I said, what color was it? She said it was blue. Now, had I asked the same question before I gave her the cinnamon, she wouldn't have any way of recalling that memory. So that's how strong our food memories are. Now, the big fast food chains have taken great advantage of the psychology behind that because no matter where you go in the world, you order a Big Mac, it's going to be the same. Because if it's not the same, you'll be disappointed. That's why there's consistency in the fast food. If we can take that consistency and learn from it and put it in our smaller restaurants or the independent owned restaurants, so that if you have a dish on the menu and every Day that dish is made, it's always the same. It presents the same, it tastes the same. So the customers keep coming back to it. We love going to your restaurant because the shrimp and avocados, it's always the same. So we come here for that. And that probably rings a bell with all of you in, in that. Uh, and, and just to, to emphasize that, because it's so important, if you don't meet the customer where they're at with the taste memories, they're not going to come back. Uh, if you, uh, those of you who might have watched the, the movie Ratatouille, uh, and uh, I have to make a disclaimer here because the thing that I watched the movie where there's a rat actually cooking food, it was, it was quite funny. Like, that's the the movie was. But the time when the food critic was coming to the restaurant, the, the film was so well researched when they made it that the food critic came in and the ratatouille, which was the dish, the ratatouille is a French vegetable dish. Uh, and this dish of ratatouille would sing out to the food critic. The minute he tasted it, he was transported back to his childhood, cooking in the kitchen with his mother. And because they hit the taste memory right on the on the on the, on the, on the nail, he got they gave them uh, rave reviews. And of course, that was the end of the film. So yeah, taste memories are very very important. All right. So now we're going to go and get our uh, fish uh, out of the oven. Let's see how we're doing. Now it's got uh, a little bit more color, right? And I've got it, we're going to start plating that. And I'm going to use uh, a different colored plate. I'm going to move our shrimp over here so that uh, we can get it close up a little bit later. And now we're going to start plating. I have uh, our couscous, which is nice and yellow. And we've got our salmon ready to go. Now, if I 
take this salmon off, we're using the tongs, it's going to break apart. And there's going to be pieces missing out of it. And if I send that out to the guest, the guest is going to say, like the, the, the three bears, who's been eating my part? The piece gone out of the fish. It doesn't look appetizing. And it, it casts a doubt on the customer's mind. So we want to avoid that. So we're going to take, um, I'm going to take a little couscous and I just fluff it up. You can see how I fluff it up. Couscous, fantastic uh, grain. Uh, sorry, pasta. It's not a, it's not a, this doesn't derive from a plant like I just mentioned, but it does contain gluten. So couscous is not gluten free. Quinoa, its closer cousin, uh, is gluten free. Quinoa comes from South America. It was an ancient grain at the time of the Incas. And it was called the mother of all grains. That was the way they translated it. That's such high importance in Inca food culture. So I'm going to put this in the middle of the plate. And I put a bit of turmeric for the color. Now you see why. If this was just white, it would be white on white. And now I'm going to take this. Salmon right on top here. Then we're going to put it to one side. And I'm going to put a little bit of our chopped chives. And I'm also going to make a lemon decoration for you. I'm going to cut it in half, in half again, and I'm going to use just the half. And then I'm just going to cut it halfway like that, almost right through, and again, almost right through the other side. And then I just flip them, and we get a nice piece of lemon that looks a little bit, there we go. It looks a little bit more attractive than if I just put this on the plate. So we're going to put this here. And then I have, I've got finely chopped chives. And I want to put in a little bit of color around here, a bit of green, just to fill that, but not completely. I'm not putting a sauce with this fish tonight. I could have made, uh, I was debating on to make a cilantro cream sauce and that would go very well with this as well. So there you've got that. And I can also put a little bit of dill. Dill goes very well with fish. I can put a little bit of dill on top of our lemon here, just to give it that little bit of extra color. For Now, this is a very light dish. There is no vegetable associated with it. You can create whatever vegetable you want with it. You can saute some zucchini, off in butter with a little bit of shallots and put a bit of green vegetable on the side. Uh, you could add a sauce to it. There are so many components, but what has happened, let's say about 10 years ago, and you would read the description of a dish in the restaurant, and there were so many ingredients listed in the dish. So chef's being creative. I believe if we put more ingredients, it's going to sound better. The, the problem was the customer had no idea what kind of flavor the dish is going to be when it came table. So with this one, we do. Right? So it's with lemon. Now, this lemon, I could also grill it and right sear it on the grill with black marks on it. The, sorry, brown marks or on black. Really, really with grill marks and put that on it. And that has a nice uh, <laughs> feel to it. So, but I'm not using uh, that half of the lemon. So that's our second dish. We're coming up here on our, on our conscious of our time, and if you do have any questions, uh, this is our this is our dish. I think you can get that for uh, that looks beautiful, Brandon. All right, thank you. So I'm going to put that one to one side as well, and 
going to put this away. <laughs> and we're going to concentrate on our dessert. And for the dessert, I have prepared, uh, I use mason jar rings, when, for example, when I have a plastic chopping board on stainless steel that keeps moving. When I put mason jar rings down, it won't move anymore. Um, I use that instead of a wet towel. Wet towels are not, not very hygienic. That's such a fun tip. Yeah. So we have to look at how we could make this, how we could make it attractive. Um, I have uh, many ways I can present it and, and so do you at home. Uh, ideally speaking, could put it in a bowl and serve it with ice cream, which would it be a uh, perfect accompaniment to it. Let me show you what it looks like first. So here we are, our apples, beautifully. Now they're not all mushy. So you can see there's, there's chunks and smells very fall, right? very, very fall like dish. So ideally you could put this in a bowl, a nice scoop of vanilla ice cream with it and you would have a beautiful dessert. I'm just going to show you one or two ways that we could do this probably a little bit differently. So we're going to take some and put it in these small dishes. Uh, I'm a firm believer that when you have your dessert, um, that it should be smaller rather than larger. Uh, when we came to the United States the first time, about 25 years ago, we went out for dinner with our children, so there was four of us, and like in Europe, we ordered four desserts. And when it came to the table, we said, we had enough food for a week to figure it out. We couldn't believe the size of the desserts. So next time we would order maybe only one, and it was enough for the four of us. Um, so I'm not a big believer in big portions. Uh, you can see here that these dishes that I made, you can eat the shrimp and avocado, then you can eat the salmon, and then you could eat this, and it would be just enough. You have to take into consideration uh, if many restaurants they make such big portions that when it comes to time for dessert, you say I can't eat dessert. And the restaurant that actually has lost on the sale of the dessert because they gave too much food in the, in the entree. So that's just an observation from, from uh, myself. All right, so I did this for, this would be a little romantic uh, tray for two people, right? And I have these little hazelnut stuff cookies. These are, I didn't make these, these are commercially bought. All right, so we have that. And then we can take a tiny bit of powder sugar, just give it a little bit of a fist. All right. So that is possible to have one like that. And then we can put in. What I like to do is I send this out to the, to, the, to the table and I'll put three raspberries on it. There's two people. So if it, the third raspberry becomes the conversation piece and the customers don't know, but it's, it's a little something of you have it, I have it, whatever. And it's uh, help entertain the people. So that's our dessert selection. Now there's another way that we could do this. The, might be for Thanksgiving, you could do it. Uh, I'm just going to do this here. And I brought a cast iron. Dutch oven, but small. I'm just 
going to be one portion. Confectioner's sugar. I thought I just told you what I was doing. Then we're going to take these off. We're going to put our dessert right in the middle. And we're going to add on bigger piece. And we could add that as just a simple fall dessert, something for the customer to appreciate and to admire and we can add a nice thing to eat right in the middle. Now this lends itself also to having a little scoop of ice cream uh, in smaller scoop preferably. Uh, we have different sizes of scoops here at the restaurant and I like to give a small scoop because the focus is on the apple. The apple and the cranberry they are the kings of this dish. So the ice cream is a, as I say in French, not to, is an add-on. So we don't want the add-on to take away from the flavor. That's why a vanilla ice cream would be uh, good. Coffee might be too strong. So that is our menu for this evening. Uh, again, we've got our dessert, just two ways of presenting it. And then, Our shrimp. I'm going to bring it back again into the picture. Shrimp. And we've got our salmon. I think the, the, the zoom is where you can see those. And uh, that's my presentation for tonight. I hope that it Makes you feel like you want to cook it, uh, but it's very simple to prepare food. It's a matter of thinking it through. Um, all three of these dishes, I did not know how they would look when I started cooking. I, I had a rough idea how I would do the shrimp. I had a rough idea how I would do this, and I had an exact idea how I would do that. So that a lot of the uh, creativity come in. Now, if we were in a restaurant, if I was doing this tomorrow night for another Zoom, these might, and the same menu, they might look slightly different. For a cooking show like this, that works. In the restaurant, it does not work because the customer wants to see the scene every time. That's why they told their friends, you've got to come with me to this restaurant. You have to have the apple and cranberry medley it's to die for, and they do the funny thing with the spoons on the plate. You've got to see that. And then you show up with your friends and there's no apple metric on the menu anymore, and the decorative thing with the spoons isn't there anymore. Customer's disappointed. So you've actually created a customer complaint as opposed to a happy customer. Awesome. That's what we teach our students a lot here in the, in the restaurant is these kind of management skills that when they're managers later on and they see these inconsistencies, that they realize it's my responsibility as the manager to step up and educate people who report to me that these inconsistencies actually will result in a customer complaint. And if we don't have customers, we don't have a business. And COVID-19 has really shown us that when the customers don't show up, show up for whatever reason, uh, there's no business. So that's how finely tuned every customer is. When the students start in the afternoon preparing the food, and I brief them on what we're doing, I say, every piece of food you touch, you are adding value and you're adding to a comment to the customer's comment card tonight. Will you add a positive comment or will you add a negative? Are you careful about what you do or you are nonchalant and you don't worry? So there's no room for errors. Everyone who's preparing food must find together and then we get customers who write in and say they like the food. So we're very focused on making sure that the customer is happy 
because the students are cooking it and I want the students to get the compliments. So then we send to the students to go to every table at the end of the evening from the kitchen. They have to walk around the entire restaurant and ask every customer, how did you like your meal? And they have to be ready for the answer. And that's important because that's what managers do. So if there's any questions on the chat, uh, Tori. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Brenda and I. I am so excited that you get to eat that wonderful meal. It looks beyond beautiful. Uh, we love seeing the creativity of what you can do with um, your plating. <laughs> I would like, before we wrap up, I would like to introduce my camera person. Of course. So this is my wife. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hi, Christine. <laughs> and now we get to enjoy that, too. <laughs> and uh, the reason being that we could be in here uh, filming together is, is because um, we're, we, we're a couple. And um, we, I've been at Endicott for 25 years, 20 wonderful, 25 wonderful years. And uh, our children are graduates of Endicott. And I'm also a graduate of bachelor program. I uh, graduated in 99 with a bachelor's uh, in business. And that was one of the first years that men graduated from Endicott because we went co-ed in, co in 94. So 98 was actually the first graduating class with uh, uh, where there were men. And then I went back to uh, the Van Loan Professional School and got my MBA uh, four years later. Uh, so and then I went back to school uh, four years ago and got my doctorate. So uh, thank you again. It was a pleasure to have you tonight. And I hope that you'll be able to follow those recipes and cook something maybe Thanksgiving or on a special maybe Columbus weekend, long weekend. So thank you again. <laughs> thank you so much, Brendan. I'm, and I want you to know the chat was lighting up with reviews. Um, everyone says thank you very much. They loved the extra tips and the creativity you. <laughs> that you put into your meal. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank awesome. Everyone, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I did say it in the chat. If anyone did take pictures of their own dishes, um, please send them to homecoming at endapot.edu. We'd love to share them um, out on our social media and get everyone else excited about the class that we just learned from. Um, and I know a couple people said, will Chef Brendan give another Zoom class? I'm hoping so. Um, we've had him on for a couple of classes over the summertime. This is our third class with him for the alumni world. And hopefully we'll continue to be able to do this in the future.